So this is still the same day for us, even though it's a week yes, later it's for a you week guys. Later for you, which means today is still the day in which Brandon went to the dentist. I had a root canal. Um, awesome. Did which, he sing the whole song uh, about how he wants no, to be a dentist from no, Little Shop of Horrors? He did not. Oh. I was thinking that's Steve Martin, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he did not. He was very good. Um, I didn't know what a root canal was until somewhat recently because I actually tend to not need a lot of dental work. Just whatever I have hmm. the genetics for teeth that uh, have we talked about this before? I never got wisdom we teeth. We have not. You never like you never wisdom teeth did not come into your mouth. They did not grow out of your head at any they, point. Uh, they don't exist back there. That's bizarre. Because I always say this is my mother. My mother did not get adult teeth. She still has her baby teeth? She still teeth? has her baby teeth. teeth. Um, uh, almost all capped at this point. I don't know if I'm going to say that you got good genes. See, but I got the <laughs> genes that said, I get my full adult teeth, but no wisdom teeth. But no wisdom but teeth. No wisdom okay. teeth. What are the odds that mm. you did get your wisdom teeth taken out, but you got so many drugs, you forgot it, and your parents never told you? Well, you know, stranger things have happened, <laughs> but uh, but Jordan didn't either. Really? Uh, my brother. No, uh, no wisdom okay. teeth as far as I remember uh, for either of us. I can't remember about my sisters, but um, I I do occasionally need a filling or something like that, but mm -hmm. have not had, like my wife has had really serious dental work on a couple of teeth. It's just yeah. over and over and over again. Uh, but I did eventually, one of my teeth um, was having problems. We capped it. It still uh, was really sensitive to hot and cold and mm -hmm. to pressure. And the dentist is like, you should just go get a root canal, which is where they just kill the tooth, right? Yeah. They um, go down inside of it mm -hmm. and just take everything out. <laughs> yep. So let me ask two questions. Mm -hmm. Number one, um, has this changed over your life? Like right. I can mark about, 35 years old, so about mm -hmm. 10 years ago, my teeth started to get bad. Right. And they had been very strong, very good my whole life. And then the mouth chemistry changed or right. my bones are getting old. I don't know what it is. Right. That's just, yeah. I assume that's going to hit me. This this thing is not that. Okay. I've always had these two teeth that I think is probably the gums receding, where they got really sensitive on the back near the gums. Mm. Um, and the reason we ended up having to have the root canal is I went to the dentist and I'm like, can you just like put fillings in there so I don't have that? And they did and it made it worse. Oh. Uh, not their fault. This is mm -hmm. something I asked for, but then it's like, they're like, we can try a crown or a cap or whatever you call that. And I'm like, all right, let's do that. And mm -hmm. it still made it worse. Yeah. And then they're like, something's just really wrong with this tooth. But these two teeth, it's it's been like 10 years that these two teeth are just mild annoyance. Mild rather than annoyance. All right, so here's escalated. the second question. Mm -hmm. um, how studiously do you care for your teeth? Are you a brush and floss every time you eat kind of person? No, I, I brush every day. I floss regularly, but not every day. Okay. I only brush once a day. Uh, so I am not the best uh, at dental hygiene. I'm not the worst, okay. somewhere in between. Is that like at bedtime yeah. or is that right before a huge event? No, nope, that's a bedtime, uh, <laughs> bedtime. Um, I brush in the morning if I actually have a huge event. Mm -hmm. um, I've always uh, heard that you brush in the morning for other people <laughs> and you brush at night brush for at you. Brush at night for yourself. Uh, so if I am going among other people, then I brush my teeth. Yeah. So, um, or I will do take a breath mint or mouthwash or something mm -hmm. along those lines. But yeah. That's cool. So the the one root canal that I have had mm -hmm. is on this back tooth way back here. Yep. Uh, which died while I was in Europe. Oh. Years and years ago, the first uh -huh. time I went to Germany for a book tour, yep. I was in the Leipzig Book Fair um, and, you know, started to get a little bit of pain there. Mm -hmm. Enough that I commented on it to, like, my publisher and stuff that was taking mm -hmm. me out to dinner. Uh, but then when I finished there... I flew to England and I was in England for mm -hmm. like a week, week and a half. And that's when the tooth is just gave up and said, mm -hmm. okay, I'm done. And then every bite was agony. I ended up eating like noodle soup every day because I could just slurp without having to put any pressure on my teeth. Mm -hmm. It was horrific. Mm. And then I got home and went straight to the dentist. Like as far as I remember from airport to dentist, it was... I, I was in so much agony and the guy looked at it and he's like, yep, this tooth died. We need to take it out. So root, full root canal. Mm -hmm. uh, the numbness has worn off in my mouth. 
Uh, okay. But I did, at their suggestion, take ibuprofen before I... Um, and mm-hmm. so I feel no pain yet. Oh, well. uh, we'll see what happens when the ibuprofen. Do you wears tend off. to have a high pain tolerance anyway? I do. In fact, I usually get fillings without uh, any uh, anything. I just let them numb, drill. Numb the mouth? No, I I just don't have them. It doesn't bother me, so I don't know why I would need it. What's wrong with you? It doesn't bother me. <laughs> it's a different kind of sensation. Tooth stuff is mm. not pain. It's like a coldness. That's um, weird. That it doesn't hurt. Hmm. Uh, it's okay. just an annoyance, which is why I got those ones filled. Like, I will take straight pain over annoyance most of the time. Uh, <laughs> I would rather something just hurt than than annoy me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I get fillings, they, I don't, like, I'm pretty, I don't know what would happen if I tried to get a crown or a root canal without it. Uh, I assume that would be too much for me. Probably. Um, I have never tried because that just feels would feel macho and dumb, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. Really what they're doing in a root mm-hmm. canal is yes. uh, the hollow center of your tooth is yeah. filled with nerves and other matter, yeah. and they need to go and take that out. Since yes. they're actual live nerves, yeah. it would hurt if they were not numbed. Yes, I assume that, they, <laughs> I assume that it would. Yeah. But again, a cavity getting drilled doesn't hurt me. Well, um, there you go. And so- I mean, provided it doesn't hit anything except just- yeah. Mm-hmm. And enamel. So, and so it just, it, it basically just, yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. uh, so. That's crazy. Um, so. Okay. Now I know that people are going to wonder, so I'm going to ask. Yes. Uh, a root canal is basically an hour or two of you sitting there mm-hmm. with your eyes closed and your mouth open. Yeah. Um, did, did you work on a new book or were you thinking through an existing so book? So it's a new book that I'm not going to get to write, oh. um, because, Um, I have to finish Stormlight 5 before I'm allowed to write any other things. So this is basically the thing I work on in my brain Mm -hmm. when I want to, because I've done what I can do right now for Stormlight 5 Mm -hmm. in my brain. And so this new one, um, I actually was thinking about, can I write a book using a television episode format in a novel form? And I was trying to apply this idea I'd had to that. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you about it sometime. Yeah. It's, it's actually a good idea, uh, the premise and things. I think it would work. I don't know that I'll ever be able to write it. but um, So I don't want to bring it up in Brandon's bad ideas. But that was what I was working on. <laughs> I like to imagine, mm-hmm. you know, like if, if uh, you're on a rowing team, yeah, you go through the whole race like in your head, in your mind palace. Mm-hmm. And that's your practice. I, I assume that's what this is for you. Like Sometimes. I'm going to pretend to write a book of... in my brain just to keep the skills sharp. That is a bit of what I do. Yeah. It's also interesting, like, how... I, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging. Tell me if I'm bragging. Slap me around. Um, <laughs> my I'm, I'm well known in the community, mm-hmm. right? So it has gone from... Actually, one of the first places... I I had the oh I'm kind of famous was when I went to a dentist years ago and laid down and I was mentioning my name and someone across one of the hygienists said wait the Brandon Sanderson and came running <laughs> over right uh, and I was in that now I'm in the stage where I can just assume that people know who I am mm-hmm. which feels arrogant right don't you know who I am but I just assumed that these guys knew who I was yeah. And lo and behold, like we didn't even have to talk about it and things. Um, and they both, the dent, the hygienist and the the oral surgeon, both just knew, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. uh, in the same way that, like, I don't know, if a senator came in, you're going to know who the senator is when the appointment yeah. is made. Someone is going to tell you. It doesn't mean that don't they read my books. Go gaga over them. But well, and that's that's yeah. especially good because yeah. There is no more awkward conversation than in mm-hmm. a dental chair. Yeah. Because they'll ask mm-hmm. you a question while they've got like three instruments down mm-hmm. your throat. And then how do you answer? Yeah. Um, but, you know, we could talk about <laughs> things and I could, I just got the feel that they just knew who I was. And mm-hmm. so I could mention things um, and um, and then I'd, it like about my profession and not have to explain it. It was It was kind of an interesting experience from that. That angle. Well, there you go. Something else fun about this one, something I'd never run into before. Okay. Uh, the dental assistant. They didn't call uh, her a hygienist. They called her an assistant. And it's because I found out she is 18, just graduated from high school, and she is the oral surgeon's daughter. 
Oh. And so she'd been working for him since, you know, for like four years mm -hmm. and apprenticed as, but she doesn't want to be a, high, a dentist. She wants to be um, work in politics. And so she's going to BYU next year okay. in political science and things. But I was like trying to figure out because she was talking about, I, I mentioned my son in high school and she's, oh yeah, she's like, those we high school students. I'm like, wait, we? <laughs> you can't be a high school student and be working on yeah. my mouth. That's not, that doesn't compute. Mm -hmm. um, this is, this is a job that, but yeah. turns out when it's a Get family business. My teeth. Yeah. Yeah. And which sounds so freaky. Mm -hmm. Like you haven't been to school for this. Sure she has. She's been apprenticing with her father yeah. for four years. She was really good. Like, yeah. and you could tell they have a good rapport. It's like, mm -hmm. um, and she knew exactly what she was doing. She was obviously brilliant. Um, but that was kind of fun. The, I, you don't expect your dentist to yeah. have the Bring your child, child to work, to work um, and things like that. But um, that's funny. That's yeah. uh, cool. My six-year-old, my youngest, mm -hmm. wants to be a dentist. Oh, okay. That's her new thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do sing the the "You'll Be a Dentist" song from mm -hmm. from Little Shop every time she brings it up. But that is her goal in life: is she wants to be a dentist for not, now. She's six. She's six. It's yeah. going to change. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not a doctor. It is very specifically a dentist. See, that's smart because dentists, like doctors, the insurance, the stress, the you know, dentist is like being able to work in the medical field and still take care of people. Uh, help them heal. Like both the doctor and the uh, the assistant today are like, oh, we're sorry you have to come to the dentist. I'm like, I'm so happy I live in a time where I get to go to the dentist. Um, what is the alternative that I live and my tooth falls out or gives me? Yeah. Yeah, I am really happy. The alternative is that you take it out yourself with yeah. an ice skate and a rock. Yes. Like in Castaway. Um, and so they were like this, but um, anyway. Yeah, uh, so- Mm -hmm. When I was in college, yeah, uh, before I got married, so my roommates mm -hmm. were Ben, who we talk about all the time, yep, yep, and then two other guys mm -hmm. who both went to dental school, and uh, so fifty percent of my college roommates were dentists or have I, become dentists since. I think a person choosing to be a dentist is is a mark of intelligence to me <laughs> because they're like, hmm. I want to do all this, you know, it's it's still really hard, still mm -hmm. a lot of research, still you have to be an expert in your field, still very respected in the community. But you don't have to worry about your patients dying and or malpractice insurance. Now, granted, yeah. I'm glad there are doctors too. Let's be clear. Well, I don't think anyone was questioning that. Being a, being a doctor is also a sign yeah. of, you know, intelligence. Mm -hmm. But anyway. No, but but here's the yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. is once they, you know, did mm -hmm. their undergraduate and then they left mm -hmm. to go to dental school, wherever you go yes. to dental school. And what they told me is that there was just a day of dental school mm -hmm. where they had to learn how to give each other Novocaine shots. And so everyone just showed up at school that day and just started giving everybody shots. That by itself, I could never be a dentist. Really? Um, shots, shots? Shots are the thing that gets me. Really? I can watch like the most gruesome huh. horror on TV and be fine. But then somebody gets a shot or, you know, they're like fleeing from the yeah. government and they have to give themselves a shot. Yeah. I have to look away or cover my eyes and my wife laughs at me every time. The, uh... Uh, what was his the the twenty four? What's his name? Jack Bauer. Yeah, giving himself an adrenal shot right mm -hmm. through his chest. Yeah, yeah, that um, sort of thing. In the Fugitive, Harrison mm -hmm. Ford has to give himself a shot. And mm -hmm. I'm like, like I could watch all the people die in the train wreck. I can watch the mm -hmm. most gruesome autopsies on CSI, but, but then that. they pull out a hypodermic syringe, and I'm like, oh no, please. Right. Why do they show this trash on TV? Right. It's too much for Does me. Does getting shots bother you? Yes. Like, okay. It's it's horrific. I would, um, I can kind of empathize with watching a shot. There's something uncomfortable about seeing someone. I don't see it more than being stabbed or something like that. In fact, much less. I'd rather mm -hmm. see someone get a shot than get stabbed in a film because I don't enjoy I the gore. So much rather see someone in get the, stabbed. the same way as you. But I can understand the discomfort. But I don't mind getting shots. Uh, it doesn't 
It's the worst. I have to look away mm -hmm. and I have to really control my breathing. You know what the uh, the doctor did today, uh, the oral surgeon? It's really interesting. He said, all right, this is going to, uh, he didn't say this is going to pinch. He said, all right, this this will be a shaking sensation for a little while. And he's like, all right, it's just going to shake, 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 shake. And I'm like, huh, I bet he is trying to cross the nerves in the brain to change the sensation of pain to the quivering sensation of the needle mm. rocking back and forth. And so I asked him afterward, he said, yeah, and about 50% of patients, if you say it in the right way and do it, the brain will focus on the shaking sensation and won't even notice the pain because the pain of a shot is actually really, really slight, yeah. very, very small. And so he's been trained to do this thing that helps a certain number of patients just not even pay attention that to the fact crazy. that they're getting a shot. Uh, I thought it was a really cool little little That's slide awesome. of mind he trick. He tricked you. Yeah. So uh, several mm -hmm. years ago, I injured mm -hmm. this elbow and I, I the ulnar nerve that runs across and that controls yep. these fingers. Um, and for months, we couldn't mm -hmm. figure out what it was. The first doctor we yep. went to, some idiot at an Instacare, uh, was like, oh, you're a writer? It's carpal tunnel syndrome, right. which is clearly not even the right fingers. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the time, I was too dumb to know that. And so I wore a brace, yep. and that just made it worse. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, I ended up at a sports medicine guy mm. down here in Orem uh, to do some tests. And uh, he told me the names of the tests when I made the appointment. He's like, Clearly, there's something wrong with your arm, with your nerves. We're going to do some tests. We're going to figure it out. Uh, and I didn't know what the tests were, but I knew the names. And so mm -hmm. I told my mom, who has right. MS, so she's had like every nerve test ever right. made has been done. And she said, oh, okay, call me when you're done. And I didn't think anything of it. I foolishly did not think my mom is setting me up. Uh-oh. And so I get there, and one of the tests that they do mm -hmm. is they put electrodes on your hand. Uh-huh. And then they stick a needle in your shoulder cool. and electrify it. <laughs> and then they time how long it takes that signal to get to the electrodes in your palm. Okay. And that test ended with me passed out on the floor and like coding in the room. And they had to call other people in. And the doctor's like, okay, we don't have to run this test. You're fine. <laughs> and uh, because that's like my worst nightmare. See, where I react, um, I don't have these, the phobias like that. Mm -hmm. I don't have, but um, if I have give blood or blood is taken, I pass out. Really? Is it so the blood, not the needle? Yeah. I actually, um, uh, there was a time when I dropped a knife and cut my foot and didn't notice that I cut it because it was like one of those, it was a mm -hmm. very sharp knife. Yeah. And so they didn't instantly bleed. So I picked up the knife and kept going. And a few minutes later, I got woozy and almost collapsed. And then I looked down and I'd been leaving blood on the floor. Mm. Um, so I don't like know what it is. a ton of blood? No, not even really a ton. It's, they take a Just vial. A, a tiny they amount a is tiny enough, enough to set it off. The huh? first time it happened to me was when I was getting like a physical before I went to college. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the doctor's office. They took a vial of blood. Um, it's not the most fun thing in the world, right? Um, but I was fine. I wasn't like scared of it. Uh, nervous, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're like, all right, go fill the cup, right, in the bathroom. So I took the cup, went to the bathroom, closed the door, and I woke up on the floor um, <laughs> with the cup just discarded. Fortunately, yeah. nothing in it yet. Okay. Um, I, I only made it to the door and closed it. Um, and every time since that I've given blood um, or something, at uh, I just, I, I pass out. Wow. Um, even if I don't know, like it's hard to not even know. if it's a little blood test with just a vial, just a vial. Any less than a vial doesn't seem to do it to me. Okay, um, but it will knock me out, and I don't know why. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't know if that mm -hmm. would be an effect on it. Someone out there is like panicking because that's a symptom of some rare disease that <laughs> that the, the, they're like, oh no, Brandon is. The doctors say I'm fine. It, it sounds like it might be low blood pressure. Yeah, it could be low blood. My mother has low blood blood pressure. Um, in fact, I attribute my love of salt to an apocryphal story that my mother told me <laughs> that her doctor said, eat more salt because you have too low blood pressure. So she started cooking everything very saltily and now and I now eat everything. You love salt. Yes. Which is why you've never suffered from your low blood pressure. Maybe. You apparently have. Except um, for have, the fact that salt only affects blood pressure in like 1% of the population. I, but. Have, have you ever donated mm -hmm. plasma? So I have never donated. Ever since I, uh, I collapsed like the mm -hmm. second time, 
yeah. giving uh, blood for medicinal purposes. I just, it's not a thing I yeah. do. I have done it once. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife had an ectopic pregnancy. Okay. And ended up in the hospital. Uh, like she lost something like two liters of blood, which is right. a grotesque yes. quantity of blood. Mm-hmm. And so after that, I thought, you know, someone saved her life by donating blood. I need to give back and pay this forward. I need to donate blood. Mm -hmm. And it was the one time, and I just spent the whole time just trying not to think about the needle in my arm Mm -hmm. or wherever it was going on. Um, I uh, barely was able to do it, and I don't think I could do it again. I think there are probably some listeners who have turned this podcast off by now. Oh, for sure. This is a thing that is a legit... Thing that makes yeah. uh, a lot of people very uncomfortable. My daughter cannot mm-hmm. handle blood. Uh, she doesn't okay. pass out from the donation like you're mm-hmm. talking about, but just the sight of it uh, can make her very queasy and has in the past caused her to faint. Yep. So she is not listening to this episode anymore. Yes. Shall we talk about other phobias? Do Let's you have talk? I don't know if I have any other phobias. Okay. I don't um, know if I have anything super strong, but there's a yeah. few things that can really weird me out. Okay. I would love to hear them. One is open blue ocean. Really? Um, Particularly if you're snorkeling and you get to the edge of the drop off Mm -hmm. and you look into the void, that really weirds me out. Uh, Not in a, like, I love the Reddit thalassophobia or thalassophobia. How do you say it? Thalassophobia. Thalassophobia subreddit because it weirds me out in a way that I think is cool. Uh Uh-huh. But there is... Maybe no image that is more fascinating and uncomfortable to me than the shots they will do of of water and then they go underneath and then there's like a shark approaching, right? <laughs> like those yeah. shots or the shark at mm-hmm. night slowly breaching, the idea of the vast blackness and then this thing, this killing machine. Yeah. I mean, a shark is less dangerous even if you're in the water with it than a lion is a lot of times or things like that. Mm-hmm. Not scared of that. Okay. But the deep... Blue. So so it's more the ocean itself and the unknowability of it than yes. any specific creature. Right, right. Though again, the idea of like like that those shots. Oh, it's just the water, it's the ocean. Oh, it goes underwater and there's a thing down there. Mm-hmm. That is really That's the thing. That huh? that freaks me out. That's interesting. My, Not to stop me from going to the ocean. I go yeah. swimming in the ocean anytime I can, mm-hmm. but I've never been in the deep ocean. Right, I've never yeah. been out on a boat, and they say, "Do you want to jump in the ocean here?" I've always been where I can see the the bottom of the ocean. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't know how I'd feel about yeah. that. So my wife mm-hmm. uh, cannot handle um, the shore line. Okay, if she is in water, even if it's like knee deep, and she can't see the bottom. That just freaks her out. If we mm. can get out far enough that there's no longer sand being churned up and then you're snorkeling in like 20 feet deep, uh-huh. she's, she's fine, fine there what because if she, she can't, can see the bottom. What if she can't see the bottom? The if she can't blue. see the bottom, screw that. She yeah. is out of the water. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Even if the bottom is unreachably far away, perhaps yeah. especially if it's unreachably yeah. far away, uh, then she cannot do that. I mean, there's a... S- the uh, it does feel weird to go swimming in like on the American West Coast on the California coastline where the water is murky a lot of times because the the ocean there the waves are so uh, so persistent like if you're not in a cove or something mm-hmm. um, and I also know from drone footage that there are commonly sharks. Mm. 30 yards that way or whatever. They're very close Mm -hmm. to the coast and you can't see a thing. That place, that's kind of freaky. Um, It hasn't stopped me from going out in it, but I don't stop thinking the whole time, there's a shark probably right over there and I can't see it and that is freaky. Here's here's my weird thing about uh, sea creatures. Mm -hmm. Sharks, I assume if a shark actually, like I saw it in the water, it would freak me out. Yes. But theoretically... Mm-hmm. The thing that freaks me out would be like a sea cucumber, something slimy Damn. and weird. Because I know how a shark's going to kill me. I don't know how a sea cucumber Damn. would kill me. Right? You are so weird. <laughs> you are so weird. Something slimy and innocuous, even like a slug. I'm not like terrified of slugs or anything. Right. It's just but weird. To it's you. that yeah. weird kind of mm-hmm. alien. If that thing were to try to kill me. 
I bet it would be gross. Yeah. Like that's what that's what gets me. I wonder how many of these things I've heard people talking about, like what evolutionary um, thing happened <laughs> to cause us. Like for instance, spiders. Spiders weird me out the way they move, mm -hmm. uh, the way they, uh, the way just everything about them weirds me out. Is that an evolutionary thing that I'm, you know, like a spider is not objectively more weird than an ant, but the way the spider moves makes my brain say, ah, don't touch it. That's interesting. And the way that an ant moves, it's like, uh, whatever, pick the thing up, yeah. who cares? See, I hear that all the mm -hmm. time. Spiders are not a trigger for me at all. Yeah. Um, and so I, yeah. But you know, if I were to find like a grub, Mm -hmm. That's a weird little slimy thing. Those those are freakier those to Those are me. freakier than spiders. Oh, for sure. Okay, okay. Every time. Yeah. Like, I, I have held a tarantula, but it's not something that I will seek out and want to do, mm -hmm. uh, shall we say. And, um, you know, the, uh, the jokes on the internet of burn it with fire, I'm kind of behind that. Uh, all for it, I mean. Uh, there's there's a fun one you see on Shower Thoughts now and then. It pops mm -hmm. up all, all over the place. I don't know who said it first, but the fact, they said, the fact that the Uncanny Valley mm -hmm. uh, bothers us so much hints and indicates that potentially there is an evolutionary reason that a human being is terrified of thing that looks almost human, but isn't. Yeah. And I, I love is, that one. Which that's is a, a, a delightfully creepy thing. Yes, to think I, about. I don't know that that's how it works, but... <laughs> I'm going to pretend it does because... Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, my mother is deathly afraid of snakes. Just mm -hmm. so afraid of snakes that uh, she gets paralyzed when one is near yeah. uh, and, and, and cannot function. Uh, and I have to assume there's a lot of people who are afraid of snakes, that there's some sort of evolutionary advantage to us being afraid of snakes and spiders more than we're afraid of grubs. There are some weirdos afraid of grubs, but I think that they're statistical minority. <laughs> Probably. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. What about the, what's it called? Where uh, where they have the, the, the holes. Trypophobia. Trypophobia. Um, in general, no. Mm -hmm. But I do remember browsing through a bunch of trypophobia images at one point, and mm -hmm. I don't know why probably because I was trying to see what the big deal was and did hit a point where I got, like I could feel my heart racing and a shortness of breath. Like, mm. oh, this is this is definitely a fear reaction physiologically, even though I right. intellectually am not, not, not afraid of this. I've seen a few of those images that weird me out in the same way that the deep ocean does. Uh, they seem, perf they have to construct them. They're the ones that like, there's a finger and it's a normal thing. And mm -hmm. then like a little holes all across the finger and then the tentacles are coming out of them or something. Oh. Those ones do trigger that same sort of, it is so unnaturally weird, I shouldn't. Yeah. yeah. But see, that's a very specific body horror kind yes, of thing. Yes, that is body Whereas horror Whereas someone with full-blown trypophobia, yeah. you know, a group of straws. Yeah, an acorn. Would, would freak yeah. them out. Not an acorn, um, a pine cone. Know, a pine cone or yeah. a lotus mm -hmm. flower or. Yeah, it's the lotus flower. Something like that. Of. Yeah. Um, even just like a, uh, you know, a, a, a bench with a bunch mm -hmm. of metal holes in it yeah. uh, might get them. And that, and that doesn't, doesn't get me. Doesn't do it for me at all. Okay. So changing gears completely. Yes. Uh, this is not an issue for me anymore, but for a couple of years it was. Mm. I would get intense vertigo and mm. this horrible sense of falling uh, when I thought about outer space. Oh, like looking up at the stars uh -huh. would suddenly make me feel like, you know, that sudden awareness of the fact that our planet is not supported by anything. Y you know, you have to have faith in gravity and momentum instead of a solid object. Well, you don't have to. It'll work either way. Well, I know, but I would have to because I would suddenly get, oh, no, like mm. I am going to fall or the whole planet's going to fall and just dumb, irrational things wow, like that. That one's cool. Uh, and I, I, for a couple of years, I could not even like look at the night sky because I would suddenly just feel like I wonder if that's tethered from solidity, an agoraphobia sort of adjacent Maybe? thing. I don't know. Huh. 
in the comments, tell us if you have that one. Yeah. I have never heard of that before. That's the sort um, of thing that you hear as a writer and you're like, oh, you're like, that's, that's, a, that's a good character. Uh, like, I use that. It, it would happen sometimes at night mm-hmm. uh, because it takes me forever to fall asleep. I have you know, insomnia on top mm-hmm. of everything else. And I'd be laying in bed trying to fall asleep and suddenly think, what if gravity just started working sideways and we all just fell across the surface of the planet? Uh, and then I'd feel like, oh, no. You know, I'm, gonna happen. I've, I've lost my grip on solid objects again. Some horrible thing's going to happen, and it would freak me out. Now, you like spooky, weird stuff. I do. Uh, do you ever get, like, at night, you've watched a spooky, weird thing, and you're like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm spookified? Spookified? Yeah. Not really? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I remember thinking... Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had been reading a ghost story about just, you know, random people showing up in your house, uh, and for whatever reason got lodged into my brain, the thought of, well, what if somebody died in my bathroom? And if I go in there, he'll just be standing in the tub. And that didn't really scare me, but I couldn't get the thought out of my head. Standing? Yeah. Just standing in the tub, like in a suit. Dead? Yeah. He died there. And so he's still there. That's, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, okay. And it, like I said, it didn't really freak me out. Um, no. Bad story idea I had once. Ooh. Um, we did a, a, a flat, a, um, what do you call it? A writing sprint. Okay. At a convention I was at. Uh, and I was in this room for whatever reason. I wasn't running the writing sprint, but I'm like, all right, writing sprint. We'll do it. What are you going to do? And I wrote a story where someone was haunted not by the ghost of a dead person, by the body. I was there. Yes, were you? That was in Montreal okay. at a Worldcon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the panel was me and you and Jay Lake. Okay, yeah. And so uh, I, kn- I always thought that was a funny idea that actually isn't a story. Uh, but, you know, a guy <laughs> like wakes up in the morning and there's the corpse next to him. Mm-hmm. And then he goes and eats breakfast. And when he turns, it's there slumped over and yeah. you know he gets in the cab and there it is and that's about all i got because it was like you know you have five minutes yeah. right this and i'm like mm, what if you're haunted by a body instead of the spirit the spirit's yeah. gone on but the body sticks around the body and just always there you. which is such a clever idea mm. uh but i have never thought of anything i could do with it yeah you know it's like <laughs> it's not a story it's just a hey that's funny right uh, we have mm-hmm. those a lot as writers, and some of them get added into stories and become real things. And yeah. some of them you spend. If it was Montreal, uh, then it was when we went back to Montreal after we it were was published. The second Montreal trip. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that was like 2010. So it's like Probably. 12 years. This idea has been. I've been like, ah, it was a fun idea that I've never found anything to do with. I do remember you mentioning that that idea to me before and being like, hey, wonder if there's a, a story there, and then. Uh, no, there's nope, not. There's not yet. Um, there might be someday. Someday. Haunted by the body. Yeah. Um, so is there uh is there anything else that you're afraid of? Um so I mean, maybe speaking of non emotional things. Like yes. I'm always afraid of, oh no, what happens if I lose my kids or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but th- there is that. I am more afraid of the existential dread of change. Mm-hmm. And the inevitable and inexorable march toward decay that yeah. is the human existence. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, well, here's a good question mm-hmm. then. Um, which one scares you more, the concept of a truly endless eternity mm-hmm. or the concept of full oblivion? That uh, when you die, oblivion. you cease to exist. Full oblivion. That scares up. you. Scares is the wrong term. It. Uh, I am comforted by the idea that... I believe in an mm-hmm. eternity. Uh, full oblivion is not a thing that I, uh, yeah. A scarce, okay. maybe the right term, maybe mm-hmm. not the right term. That concept of not existing is not a thing my brain can accept. Really? Right? That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, you and I come from the same religious background. Yes. I also believe that mm-hmm. there is an afterlife, that, that we are eternal mm-hmm. beings, but I hate the idea of it. Like, I believe that it's true, and mm-hmm. at the same time, I'm like, eternity sounds terrifying. I would much rather just 
end. Man, the number of books I can write in eternity. <laughs> um, that, that's the thing. Like, um, And this might come down to different brain chemistries and things, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, we've talked about the fact that I wake up the day every day feeling about the same as I do every other day. Uh, I'm the opposite of bipolar in that if a bipolar person is manic and depressed, I am always about the same emotional yeah, you're state. You're monopolar. Is yes, that a thing? I'm monopolar. Um, and <laughs> my my emotional state is very even keel, uh, mm -hmm. almost to my detriment, right? Like um, it's my, my wife would be like, I'm dating a robot uh, because I am so just constant in the way that I feel and act. Mm -hmm. And things don't make me emotional as easily as they seem to make a lot of people emotional. And because of that, I like life in existence. Life in existence is great. I enjoy it. I enjoy every day. Uh, I know I'm saying this and infuriating some of our <laughs> listeners who are like, how come he gets to just like every Why does day? He get to be happy all the time. Um, but that's how I am. I am just yeah. I am just happy basically all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so not having depression, anxiety, or any of these things means like, man, I could do this forever. <laughs> Give me an eternity of this. I'm on board. Sounds great. See, I don't have depression. Or I've got kids with depression. Yeah. I've, mm -hmm. you know, my, I've had kids uh, in mental hospitals and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I have absolutely, I'm playing life on easy mode. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I just think, the concept of something that never ends, I know that no matter how much I enjoy it now, eventually it would become torture. Yeah, so you liked the ending of The Good Place for that reason. No, I hated the ending of The Good Place. Oh, because it was like they were trapped in, in eternal, but then they got out. They they went Buddhist. Well, and, that's the thing yeah. is, you know. Spoilers for The Good Place. Spoilers for The Good mm -hmm. Place. From my concept of eternity, mm -hmm. I believe that it is an eternity of growth and progression. Right. And they believed or they were positing an eternity of sameness. Yes. Which is hell in my right. In 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 my own worldview. Um and let's, so let's be very clear though, at least my in my perspective, the end of the good place is fantastic, but it presents a different philosophical framework than I personally have. And I think I'm glad they picked one and went with it. The whole the whole show yes. is about um, philosophy. Absolutely, but, yeah. I I take issue with their concept of reality, but mm -hmm. given their concept of reality, they came up with a very good ending and, and they, a very good solution. They had an answer. They gave an answer and mm -hmm. said, "This is what it is." Absolutely, really big props. I don't know that they could have ended that show better. I would have ended it differently in a way that would have worked better for my moral philosophy. But the whole show <laughs> is about figure out your moral philosophy. So yeah. Um, but yeah. regardless, the, these are good points to make. Yes. Uh, but yeah, the concept of eternity, ah. I believe that it will be good, but I feel like it would be awful. See, it's, it's, it's going to be fine, Dan, because time won't exist. <laughs> time is a thing of this dimension. So all, uh, all time will be one. Uh, so uh, that it, sounds it, like some nonsense. It to won't me. be eternity. It'll be a single moment that encompasses all moments, <laughs> which is uh, functionally the same thing. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. Uh, I I I went a little a uh, little Hare Krishna there um, a little bit, but that's um, okay. Yeah. Um, when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. The thing that terrified me the most, I don't know if it's true that it terrified me the most, mm -hmm. but the thing that I always claimed uh, is that I was afraid of conformity. Okay. That I was afraid of being the same as everybody else. Yeah. Okay. You know, as a, when I was younger, that bothered me more than it does now. I mm -hmm. think after you write some books and realize every idea you have has been done by somebody else in just a slightly <laughs> different way, you realize that uh, mm -hmm. originality is an illusion. Yeah. And that's not what everything is about. Mm -hmm. Well, an individuality, I think, mm -hmm. is much more important than originality. Yes, right? that's true. Like every, every idea you come up with for a book... Someone's already come up with that. But you have no one's seen your version of right. it. Right. And so being an individual has intrinsic worth. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Unless you're Ben. <laughs> <laughs>
unless sorry. Oh,